Motion. Yes, I just figured that out. Thank you. Yes, got it in one. Uh, motion to call the meeting to order. I guess I will second. All right, and I will roll call that. Paul. Yes. Andy. Yes. And myself is also a yes. So, and this is the finance committee meeting for Thursday, March 7th. And in attendance is Paul Benjamin, Andy Klopacki, David Phil, and Shardul Parmar should be joining us shortly. But we do have a quorum at this point. It's being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. Uh, Paul, did he say how late he's going to be? I think five, 10 minutes tops. Okay. Well, my impression. Why don't we do the, the reserve fund transfer and then we'll just hold off on the chief's presentation for a little bit. And so let me just look at the agenda real quick. We're going to uh, number five on the agenda, which is unanticipated 40 hours in advance, emergency repair for the Rocky Hill North Maple Street intersection traffic light DPW. And this is a request for a reserve fund, finance reserve fund transfer. So Scott, what do you got? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure if you you folks are aware or not. We've been having some some trouble with the Rocky Hill Road uh, <clears throat> traffic light, and uh, we, we had a contractor came come and finally duplicated the problem. And uh, there's a circuitry problem inside the cabinet, and the cabinet's 30 years old, and it's deemed unrepairable. Uh, we actually have a stick jammed into one of the connections to hold it in a proper uh like you know cooperating spot to keep it working for now but uh if if something happens there that's good intersection uh is going to go dark just like i said 30 years old it's just it's unrepairable uh so i uh have an estimate for the parts for twenty one thousand one hundred dollars for the cabinet uh $7,500 would be for upgrading the intersection to have Opticon. That's uh, something I talked to the two chiefs about, and they are in favor of that. It, it's when they approach the street light, it would be, you know, in green in their direction. It, they wouldn't have to, uh, you know, go around any traffic. It would it would go green. And uh, estimated labor uh, for the project is $6,000. So the grand total is $34,600. Linda, what's our current balance in that fund? Oh, you're, um... Ooh, sorry. I should have had that. Um, I don't think you've spent any of it yet. Uh, we did the fire truck part. Which was, so I just want to make sure we got enough to cover it. Right. And Chief, I'm assuming that's already been paid for or ordered. No, just ordered. Still still waiting for the part. We're hoping for May 1st. So we're still without a ladder truck as of mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I don't think any of the $100,000 has been spent. But while you're talking about it, I will uh, go into VADAR and just make sure there has been something. Uh, and Chief, that was what? Recent. Three, Five thousand, something like that. Thirty-seven change, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. And just for the record, Shardul Parmar is also here. So um, we've got four of the five members. Um, and Scott, what's the? How soon is this going to be fixed, or what's the plan? Uh, the the parts are are. The manufacturers in Rhode Island, so the turnaround is pretty quick. They have all the parts; it just has to be assembled into the cabinet. So the turnaround is going to be relatively quick. Um, all right, and what what was the dollar amount one more time? Uh, Thirty four thousand six hundred. Okay. Okay, thirty four six. All right. Any uh, discussion or anything from the? Finance committee. What was the cost of the stick? <laughs> that was pretty a bet. Okay. No, I, I'm. We have to do this, and I'm glad we're upgrading it for the uh, signaling for the emergency vehicles. Although I question whether they still won't have to go around some traffic, because um, I've seen people not pull over. 
that is one of the best intersection lights in town. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I hope it will maintain yeah. that status. And it's about half a mile away from one of the worst intersections that's just outside of our town. So this is true. Okay. So you need a motion? Yes, for $34,600, please. A uh, motion to transfer $34,600 to DPW to cover the cost of repairs to the uh, signaling system at the intersection of North Maple and uh, what is that? North Maple and uh, Rocky, Rocky Hill. Rocky Hill. Yeah. And just to be clear, that's from the finance reserve fund. From the finance reserve fund. Sorry. Okay. And confirming uh, nothing has been spent. There have been no other reserve fund transfers. That's the only way the funds can be spent or reserve fund transfers. I was just wasn't sure I was recalling, but the full 100,000 is there now. So the balance will be um, less than what you're spending tonight. I just need a second, please. I'll second the motion. All right. So motion by Paul, second by Andy. Any other discussion? Okay. I'll roll call it. Paul? Uh, yes. Andy? Aye. Shardul? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And I'm assuming this, did this already go to the select board or will it? It doesn't need to, David. Okay, cool. All right. Well, then. Easy enough. Thanks, Scott. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Have you, a Scott. good night. Yep. yep. You too. All right. Uh, back to the agenda here. Uh, we have two. number two, a uh, review of the FY25 town budget. Fire department committee will discuss the departmental budget in detail and may take votes on a recommended budget for the department. The committee may also interview the department head concerning their budget request. And Chief Bank Nebels here, so I will turn it over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, I'm assuming you have the the, bu the budget in front of you uh, with the recommended changes from town administration. And we did. I did meet with Linda and Carolyn to go over a couple of changes, and hopefully those are reflected on there. Um, the The total requested increase for us prior to those changes was uh, $49,601. Uh, that just reflected moving, uh, as of right now, the full-time firefighter that we requested out of the uh, ambulance contract budget in September, uh, that would then be split between fire uh, fire and uh, EMS. So there was that increase. Uh, there were no other salary adjustments uh, for, for myself or the full-time folks, um, other than some additional stipends for folks that are graduating from EMT basic to paramedic um, and an additional stipend for the deputy for obtaining his uh, uh, fire investigator. Uh, so there was some small, small numbers there. Uh, the overtime budget was just reflected with the new pay pay rate for, for this year after the retro pay and uh, FY 24. Uh, so all that remains the same. Um, Basically, I, I don't know if you have any questions because there wasn't really anything too substantially different. I can tell you some of the things that we've done to streamline. Uh, the fire department has taken over all of, uh, we take over, we've taken over all of the cell phones uh, under T-Mobile now. So we're seeing a decrease in that cost monthly. Our IT guy worked feverishly to get all of our cell phones uh, under one account. Um, so we are phasing out of Verizon at this point. And we're seeing some of the some of the accounts, the the phones are, you know, we're talking fifteen bucks less a month. Um it's 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 quite substantial. So our total bill for the town this this month was nine hundred and nine hundred and forty seven dollars or something versus uh I mean I was paying three hundred and something dollars, three hundred and forty three dollars a month alone just for the fire department. Um so we have streamlined that. All the town buildings, as far as uh, emergency generators, extinguishers, fire alarms, which includes monitoring and inspection and testing, um, all of that has been has been put into this with estimates from the companies. Um, so all of that emergency maintenance that we need, uh, cleaning of uh, the hood suppression systems or updating the hood suppression systems, cleaning the hoods, all of that is under the fire department budget. Uh, the 95000 that you see that was restored is the cost of our 
radio equipment, the five-year lease that is now in full effect. And it also is going to be including uh, the DPW. The DPW's radio system is horrendous. They are working radio to radio. So it's one truck to another. There is no infrastructure for a repeated single signal or a receiver situation. So they were having extreme issues with communication during storms. Uh, so I worked with uh, Goose Town and, uh, and Scott, and I've not asked for anything increased in that because once we get onto our simulcast system, and I can give you a little update as of today, <laughs> and uh, Shardul, I'll be talking with you hopefully in the next couple of days, and your father, I got to meet with him on site the other uh, with uh, Verizon. Uh, it sounds like you're doing a Verizon uh, setup on the roof there. And it might be a better option for us for our public safety uh, antenna there because we've been having such a hard time at the mall finishing up our fiber project. Um, so I met with uh, Verizon, Jim O'Donnell, and your your staff um, on that. So we might have a solution for that that issue. Once that goes live, then our maintenance budget changes. So I'll be able to cover those costs for, for um, getting new radios into Scott's equipment. That'll become part of that five-year lease as well, which is pretty spectacular. Um, so their their systems are a commercial system, so they will be going off of a repeater that's already existing on Mount Mount Tom, I believe, or something. Uh, so as soon as those radios are installed, which is hopefully in the next week or two, they will have uh, much better communications truck to truck. And we, I met with uh, uh, with Scott and his fleet maintenance person, Jason. Got the total number. There's two new trucks coming in. So we've also uh, included those. So those will be built out with those radios as well. Um, so again, there won't be any increase to that line um, for next, for FY25. Uh, other than that, I think everything is pretty much status quo under then, other than some additional costs as far as the cost for our, our turnout gear. Uh, we've seen a 10% increase in cost for that. Um, so we're just trying to maintain keeping up with that. We request five sets of turnout gear a year, and we are on track of keeping every up everybody up to date. Uh, you, I, I don't know if you were, I think you should all have been aware, but we did receive the $250,000 uh, assistance of firefighter grant this year. So we were able to purchase all brand new air packs uh, for the town of Hadley. Uh, so that uh, our matching cost of 12,000 or whatever came out of this year's budget. So we are now up to date with the air packs that were out of date. And so that was a huge saving. So we'll be pushing that off of your capital plan. Um, probably in the next, uh, we actually did recruit, uh, reduce that air pack line uh, from the 15,000 to five uh, to 5,000 to try and, you know, we, we shouldn't see any, uh, any, hopefully there aren't any maintenance issues, but we are looking to uh, complete the final parts to it. There are a few parts that we need as part of that system and keeping up with batteries and, and things like that. So we left a little bit in there just to make sure we're not falling back again and, um, and getting buried for down the road. Um, again, other than that, you can, you can see, I really don't have anything major on that, on those lines as far as uh, increases. What's the update with our ambulance? Where does that stand as far as, operational capability uh the ambulance is in operation it's been in operation since october 21st uh we've done over 30 calls second calls we are tracking for uh, our estimate we said between 100 and 150 second calls um we have started just now actually started receiving some uh checks in for insurance payments uh we did have uh we were originally going to have action to our billing uh, but we, uh, I think that they're a little bit too overwhelmed with their own billing. So we decided to, uh, we actually, I got three prices from private companies. Uh, so we're going to be going with pro EMS, uh, the cost of that, they charge 4% of our total receipts, which is going to be about $6,000 off of whatever they bring in for, uh, for revenue. Um, so they are now feverishly working to make sure that we're, hammering all these insurance companies. Um, there is some good information. There's some good news at the state level as far as uh, ambulance pricing and costs and re reimbursements. Uh, uh, 
I, I won't bore you, but there was some good news today about uh, some increases in in uh, payments back from like Medicare and Medicaid, which we should hopefully be seeing uh, a better return on that. Um, and they're, the fire chiefs are doing additional work with uh, some balanced billing, which is a little bit of a tricky situation, but where we have a, a lobbyist now who's working for us to try and maximize what we can get in on a return for our private, for our fire-based EMS. Uh, privates are quite expensive. I'm sure you can you can see the difference. Um, you know, a, a basic call for a private may be over 3,000 versus all the fire departments that we've surveyed in Western Mass. You know, you're at sixteen to $1,800. So um, different overheads and things like that. So anyway, so we're evaluating that, but the ambulance has been doing, we're, we're, we're going out whenever we have uh, the ability to, to staff it, uh, if that first ambulance is out the door. Or um, has there been any, any talk with UMass for say Mullen Center events and 4th of July and things like that where they will pay us for our ambulance versus always giving it to Amherst since they're overwhelmed anyways and maybe generate some revenue or is that too soon? Oh, <laughs> well, we're knee, knee deep in that. And again, uh, we are working with uh, our legal counsel, UMass legal counsel. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but let me just say that I am pushing very hard because in my opinion, those sites are in the town of Hadley and that is revenue that we should be bringing into our ambulance service. Um, so yes, we are working feverishly on that as well. Do you foresee having to do another capital item or, uh, this fall to further fund the ambulance until things start generating enough revenue or where, where are we at as far as that goes? Uh, Linda and Carolyn can chime in on this as well, but we did have a meeting of the, uh, finance team. And we were coming up with a plan of what we would need to get through through the fall town meeting. And I am doing the best I can to evaluate what's going to be remaining. Uh, and again, Linda, please chime in or Carolyn. Um, because of the change of the contracted budget, so the 299440 that was budgeted for the ambulance for FY24, uh, the contract changed to the 180. And Linda has been working really hard with action to figure out their payment back to us because uh, they actually owe us money right now. Uh, so been working on that. And then what might be residual if it gets moved into the special revenue account to support that? I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, we did hire that full-time firefighter from, was approved back in September for uh, Michael Mazoulis, who's on board with us right now. So that full amount, uh, which is an estimate about $44,872 because it's not a full year, will be coming out of that. Um, and then there was an auto pulse, uh, basically a, a thumper that we we had uh, we had discussed purchasing out of that as well. Um, and there was one payment that was made to Action in July to start the contract year. And that was the only payment because we received our full return. So that payment of $15,000 they, they have too, which is, Part of that 134,000, I think that they currently have um, that we have in that account. Um, so, Linda or Carolyn, do you want to add to that portion? Right on the on the ambulance budget budget that's funded out of the general fund that's in your uh, included in the general fund budget. Um, Mike's talking about the contract that we have with them. Uh, it's 180 thousand a year, and they. Uh, Plan to keep it. I guess for the foreseeable future, it will be one hundred eighty thousand a year. Um, they do owe us back on that, um, but we get a rebate going forward. We'll be getting a rebate of. They expect us to get the full amount. So even though it goes in at one eighty, and we'll be, it will pretty pretty much wash at zero each year. We may have it in the revenues and in the ambulance, but while we are using them, that will be a wash and we are working out with them how to make sure we get um, payment back for the rebate they owe us when the contract was higher. So they owe us probably about $100,000. Um, and um, so the rest of the article, uh, the rest of the annual expenses, that's just for the contract for action. All of the other ambulance expenses that Mike was talking about are coming out of that article that was voted. And um, 
yes, we did sit at finance team and do a calculation. It was rough. I don't know if you've been able to do some more work on it, Mike, but um, at the time we came up with, we are going to need to have an article on an annual town meeting and it could be $185,000, Mike, is what you're thinking? Yeah, to get us to get us through that. Um, to till, October. Till that. Yeah. So, uh, again, I've I've done the best I can based upon like we have we've we've lost folks, we've added folks. So it's it's really a challenge right now. I just uh, we had one firefighter that just was deployed a month early. So now I can start adding back in his salary. Uh, we haven't hired for his position yet. Um so we're, you know, we're filling with, you know, right now with overtime on some stuff, but also our call force folks are covering because we're into 24 hour shifts. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a challenge right now, but, uh, you know, basically just so you're aware between the fire department budget and the EMS budget, uh, the special revenue or the special article budget, uh, the firefighters are basically their time is split between both so that we can start funding uh, through that special revenue. When we start bringing the money in, that'll start paying for those firefighters, half of their salaries. So all, all eight of them are split between fire and EMS. So it's, you know, it's approximately, you know, uh, 34,000 for one side to the other uh, with their stipends and everything. And then also it splits over time. The only person who's played paid completely out of that uh, EMS uh, special revenue is our firefighter medic EMS coordinator. So his full payment is out of that budget as well. So the ambulance article, the request you see of the 399057, that's for all firefighters split in half. And then the one full-time firefighter paramedic uh, <laughs> EMS coordinator. <laughs> And then their stipends for you know for their education. Um, was that was that uh, uh, the other half of that? Uh, I was looking, scrolling back up to the fire department budget. Um, was that reflected in um, that five one one eight number as well? The wages full time. Correct. Yep. Yes. That's why you saw such a minimal increase on that side because that was just so. Uh, until the end of the year, Michael Mazzullo is the new employee I just told you that we're paying for out of the ambulance contract line right now. Will then, starting July 1st, be split between fire and EMS. So that's where you see that difference in that in that line. Linda, the um, 180000 or so that we're paying to action for mm -hmm. the contract that we've been getting back based on, you know, as a rebate is... Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that contract payments coming out of the fire department budget. And then when we get the rebate, does that go back to the fire department budget or does that go back to the ambulance revolving fund or special? Oh, it, it goes into the, it goes into the general fund because we've been paying it out of the general fund. And this is the uh, first year that it is. Um, the, the rebate is paid in one fiscal year for the prior fiscal year, which is how we got kind of, well, how we got out of sync when they reduced the budget. So last year's uh, last year two ninety nine four forty. This year one hundred eighty thousand. But one hundred eighty thousand is the contract. But what we're owed is the two ninety nine four forty, and uh, for last year. So we are actually going to come out ahead this year if they were to pay it all in full. If they take a couple of years to pay it, which is a you know a possibility. Um, but I I can't I can't make that um, official. Where we can't make a give a company we can't give them an inf interest free loan um so we are uh, but we we need to tell them now what they owe us in full and their finance person understands that and uh we have our 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 uh understanding of how that uh could work out so but it will always there didn't seem we didn't see any benefit to a number of things that were discussed i don't know were you at that meeting david when we were talking about the alternatives uh, initially, but then I can't remember. Later. Okay. Um, but yeah, we were talking about various things like changing the fiscal year and, and a number of things that would make it look different, but really it just made it more complicated. We just want to have a, what, what would the payment 
be from them right now to us that would call it even and get us both on, on uh, get us caught up so that we can go forward with this 180 in, 180 out going forward. So we're keeping it, it simple. Um, and that seemed, that seemed the easiest way. So we will, we will continue with the same money and same money out, but they have this debt that they owe us that we are going to be pursuing and hopefully they'll pay a good chunk of it this year, if not all of it, which they may be able to do. So is there a way that, you know, if, if the chief is asking for 185,000, I'm assuming mm -hmm. at special town meeting, right? In the fall. Yeah. So if he's asking for 185,000 and we're planning on getting 200 something thousand back as a rebate, are we able to move that? I know it goes to free cash, but our yeah. or general fund, but are we able to put that money into the ambulance fund and then pay the contractor out of the ambulance fund? So no. Can, no, no, we can't. We can't pay. Apparently, we can't pay the contractor out of our special revenue. That's a separate. That's a separate item. So, we did a number of uh, possibilities of how we could move money around. And honestly, this still seems to be the simplest way. Um, we talked about moving money out of the ambulance budget into the article. Um, that wouldn't be enough. Then we'd have to also move in free cash. And we just decided again, keep it simple. We'll let that money roll back into free cash and we will use free cash going forward and 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 just be as as direct as as possible. Um, it comes out the same in the end. I know that you we want to say, well, we'll take this money and we'll use it for that. Uh, and then maybe that will make it more. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll all understand it better or maybe it won't seem like so much money. But I, it's. Um, it, it's it's all the same. It's free cash and what's left over. So let's just be direct about it. No, I was just looking at it as you know the idea is that we're self sustaining with the ambulance. So I, it, and I and I get it. We can't pay the contractor out of there. So that's but it, w w what I was thinking yeah. was if yeah. we can show the people that look, we really are paying it out of ambulance funds every year. This is not coming out of general revenues. Then that's a good step in that. But I I understand so. We're still in those bridge years where eventually we will, it'll be completely self-sustaining and there won't be anything in the regular budget, but we, that's a few years away. Could I, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope not. I hope it's not too many years away, but could I go back just cause I want to confirm here as far as, so what we have remaining in our, in our budget for this year under the ambulance, you know, we're still paying salaries and everything. So I just, I want to make sure that we understand. I don't know what the exact number right now because we're still, you know, we're still we're we're in March, so we still are paying half of our firefighter salaries out of this budget and overtime. And I can't tell you if there's going to be an additional cost if we have to buy more supplies if we're not getting, you know, we are we will be getting money back through our receipts, but there's still the need to, you know, purchase equipment if needed, and then that revenue source will start showing up was, is there intent on supporting that with an article now or no? Cause we had talked about if we were going to be moving the residual funding from, I know, I think it's logistically more difficult what's left in that ambulance contract. Cause I think that needs to go back to free cash, but are we putting additional funding into this budget for this springtime meeting? That's what we are going to be putting an article on. Oh, okay. Warren, there is there's one hundred fifty thousand left in the article now. Right. Yep. And you've got four months. Left. A quarter to go, yep. or more, more like four four months to go. And we didn't think that was going to take you to the fall. Correct. So yep. we need to get you to the fall, and then then we'll probably need to address this again in the fall. So if one hundred fifty three plus one hundred eighty five gets you to October, Mike, is that? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I was asking. I was just confused about yeah. what, because David had said fall town meeting. So I yeah, just, I, I was under the impression. Oh, that did I misunderstand? Was, yeah, yeah, that, that was my question, whether we were doing this now or if we were doing, because, you know, typically capitals in the fall now. So that's why. Okay. I I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No, we're, we're talking about putting it on for spring town meeting. Okay. He has to get, we have to get to October. And which is assuming our special town meeting is in October and then um, be taking a look then because next when we fund it in October, 
we'll be able to um, net out all of the special revenue that has come in since last October. So there'll be a year's worth of revenue, but we at this point cannot, let's say he gets, he gets money in, we can't spend that money. That special revenue that comes in accumulates until we pay out of it in the fall. So in the Springtown meeting, because we can't access any of the special revenue um, at this point, and it really hasn't, it's, it's insignificant at that, this point anyways, Springtown meeting, that has to be funded completely with free cash to get to October. October town meeting, we'll look at that budget again, what you need to get to the end of the fiscal year, Mike. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and fund that from a combination of accumulated special revenue and free cash to, to balance it out. And so we're kind of going in that direction where we're trying to build up the special revenue to support it. But it's going to need regular influxes of, of free cash until we reach that point. And that first Warren article for the ambulance was 500,000? 400,000. Okay. And, then and just... We're doing an estimate, David, of a revenue stream. So right now we are tracking for 120 calls. And conservative, we were doing 750 calls. Um, that was recommended by a number of chiefs. However, we've put in for, you know, based upon Medicare, Medicaid, or full, you know, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Um, we're estimating 1,000 because we have had a number of intercepts as well, which boosts our ambulance up to an ALS level. So we actually bring in an ALS rate and then we pay our intercept person a set rate. And it's usually 275 bucks to, you know, to 500. And then we get the net, the rest of it. So, um, so again, we, we put in, we're, we're estimating again, potentially a first year of 120,000 coming in. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Can't be the only one to talk. No. Uh, so, Chief, it sounds like we're on track as, you're, as far as you're concerned. Yeah. And again, like I said, it's just such a challenge now with staffing. So we've gone to the 24s. Uh, the deputy chief and I are, uh, you know, during the day or at night, like we have, there's multiple evenings where we have two ambulances out. And uh, it's, it's, we are not seeing a decrease in calls. Our call volume is, I think we're up another nine and a half percent this year in in calls across the board for fire and EMS. So I think you're gonna. I I can't foresee you not getting back the full subsidy again from action. Uh, so hopefully we can get them to to get that what what's owed back to us. Just so you're aware, our contract is really strict as far as uh, the ALS side of it. So if they are unable to staff their ambulance at the ALS rate. We have our contract with them requires them to pay our neighbor. We have a contract with Northampton. If they have folks available, they will, will send a truck over here. Uh, Northampton bills us and then we bill action. And then on top of that, they receive a $500 fine for not being able to provide that ALS. So we are moving that out of that action contract and putting that into our special article. Uh, it's going to be easy to track going in and out over there, um, having conversations with Mary and Linda and Carolyn. So we are we are cleaning that up as well. Um, so again, there there's some there's some money that you'll see building up if they can't meet that requirement. So we we are we are holding them to the fire on that, and they they've been really it's been a lot better now that we're post COVID being able to get the staff back in, but every once in a while we'll still get the blip. Uh, for example, this weekend, we're going to have three ambulances in Hadley. It'll be action or at ALS level, or a, a backup from action, uh, med two, which will be BLS and then ours because of the Blarney event. So, um, so we are, we are preparing for that as well. Thank you. Uh, if you mentioned this while I, uh, my computer dropped out there for a minute, um, what is the track for us to become self-sustaining? You're saying we're on track now for this year. What's the longer term horizon? What point do you estimate we're going to be? So we are, we're required to do one year at the BLS level. And uh, we do not want to, 
we don't want to decrease our service in the town of Hadley to a BLS level of service. Uh, we feel it's critical to keep that ALS. So that's why we have the the contract with Action. It is We are tracking right now to within the next one to two years, depending if we can, um, you know, again, it's staffing. We need to have enough medics to be able to, to do this. And right now we are, I don't want to jinx myself because it seems like every time I say something, something else happens. But two of our new hires are actually about to obtain their medics, medic level. Um, which is outstanding. We also are, are looking to put a third into a medic program in the fall. There is some uh, some grant funding available. And then one of my recent hires who's taking the spot of Nick McKenna, uh, Nick moved on to West Springfield. I was fortunate to get a gentleman from East Longmeadow and he has his medic. And then our EMS coordinator also has a medic. So we are looking where we could actually staff each group of two firefighters with a medic and a basic which is the state standard and then figure out how we want to transition away from action or maybe adjust or modify the model where you know maybe their ambulance is only here uh during specific times or whatever and then that in turn would potentially decrease the the contract rate but then we would also be seeing those revenues coming in um for, you know, at an ALS level or BLS level, but it would be coming direct to us rather than to action. So that's, that's the one to two year um, plan. Okay. Obviously as we staff up more, we get, we have to bring more in more revenue to offset that. Correct. So as part of that approach, uh, you're aware we've applied for a safer grant every, every year for a number of years. Uh, we have not been very successful. Uh, obviously, we were lucky to get that AFG, but we are, uh, I was fortunate to get uh, a retired chief from Southwick who works for a professional grant writing service, really knows all the triggers for that safer grant. Um, so he, we've all already submitted a grant to update um, our our uh, exhaust ventilation system here at the center station because it doesn't, you know, we got OSHA coming on board, which is another whole disaster that I'm sure you'll be hearing more about in the future, but um, they're really pushing OSHA standard is going to become a requirement on the fire side. And just, just the initial discussions right now are, it's scary, scary stuff, what we're going to be required to do. Um, but we've applied for an AFG grant for 53,000 to get that uh, air quality system installed here at our center station. It is in the new North station that was part of the build out. Uh, and then it is our uh, the safer grant, so the staffing grant will be coming up shortly. We've already got the uh, the body of the language ready for the grant, all the statistics. Uh, our biggest issue again is when you see a population of listed as five thousand, just over five thousand. They don't really have a spot. It's really you really have to be. It's a real challenge to try and explain to the federal government that you have sixty thousand people in your community every day and the amount of calls that we're doing. So we're really, really working hard on that grant to see if we can, uh, if we can obtain that grant, we would have three years of payment, full payment, salaries and benefits for those employees, which would allow us that time to transition and hopefully have those revenues coming in to, to support those, those employees. East Longmeadow and Carolyn, you can chime in. I think they fund right now, I want to say 17 positions by their receipts from EMS and they they five years ago. That's they were literally where we are right now. Um, obviously, they have a larger population, but um, we're we're tracking right, you know, basically in the same direction. Of, you know, if you scale it, so if they have twenty seven employees and I have fifteen, we're tracking where that those uh, ambulance receipts should very much cover those costs. Thank you. And of course, now you brought up the, with the East Long Meadow, it brings up a question of, uh, you know, what is the end goal? Uh, you know, um, uh, are we going to grow as, as large as we can the, for the revenue sustains it? Or is there a, a staffing level you have in mind? Uh, right now, our staffing level is to be able to get an engine company out of out the door, especially if OSHA kicks in here, out the door 24-7 with the ability to start a fire attack. So you need two in, two out. That's an OSHA standard requirement now. Um, 
not to say we're, you know, we still have our call force uh, and it's, you know, they're, they're doing the best they can. It's hard recruiting folks right now. Um, we're doing the best we can to keep the call force going. Uh, but folks are just, they're too busy to do all this training and the requirements that we have to meet. Uh, but we do still rely on them. Uh, but the ability to have four on for, you know, for an overnight call for a structure fire, or if you have um, a medical call and two go out on the ambulance, having a plan in place of, you know, doing callback for call force members or for myself and the deputy or full-time staffing. And, but again, just um, if you look at what the net receipts were for action this year at over $800,000, uh, and to pay us back our full portion, uh, you know, uh, they, they did over I think, over 770 transports. Uh, it's pretty substantial what that revenue is. And we're not even talking about mutual aid because we really haven't been called mutual aid. And that's another whole another whole thing that may be coming up as well is, you know, mutual aid responses. We're going to have a very busy ambulance and fire department. Um, how, how about utilities with, uh, more activity and more staffing at North Adley station? Do we have enough budgeted for, you know, having that building up and running heat on AC on versus kind of a dormant building that we had for several years? Yep. Um, so the building is heated and cooled. It's all automatic right now. So it has been operating since day one, uh, cause we need to keep, obviously the trucks are. We have the radiant floor heat. We did that because it's the most, um, it's it's really efficient and uh, constant heat. You open up the doors, it has a really good recoup time. Um, as far as folks living up there, uh, you would probably sp split the crew. We're built out for, there's two bunk rooms there. So there wouldn't be any additional infrastructure needed there. It's fully generated power. If the power goes out, um, I, you know, I don't foresee any additional expenses other than um, more toilet paper and paper towels, maybe. But, um, I, you know, we're operating as it is right now with uh, with heat, air conditioning. Um, so I, I don't think we would see too much of a change in that. And then one more question on that. And this may be a Chief Mason question, but I noticed that uh, state police canine and other state police units are using our station just about five, sometimes seven days a week for their base of operations. Are we getting anything out of that or do we just let them have a hangout place? Uh, this is, this is a, this is actually the state police bomb squad under the state fire marshal's office yeah. and they are not taking advantage. They usually do a lot of their work in their trucks. Um, in my opinion, it's a huge resource for us uh, to have them in town. You know, we just had a call the other day for, you know, a uh, suspicious piece of something in a car. Uh, and they, you know, it's, I don't, I don't see them taking advantage. They're training their, they'll train their bomb squad dogs that we use all the time, uh, either to sniff, you know, they, they have to train them daily. Um, I haven't seen any kind of an increase where they're, you know, they're not making lunch and dinner in our, you know, on our stove or anything. One of them, I know he sits in his truck the whole time. And works off his laptop there. Um, they've been very courteous about that, courteous about that, and they're always there on a moment's notice for us when we call. Uh, even with the upcoming events for the, you know, for the asparagus festival, for the uh, for the spring concert, the club, uh, folks really appreciate the fact that they're in the area and available for for us as a resource. Thanks. Anybody else got anything? No, Actually, good presentation. Thank you. Do we want to uh, bring up that you're going to, that the fire truck is going to be back on for the spring town meeting as well? Yeah, I was asked to uh, to get, uh, so I, I reached out to our, our vendor. I was asked to confirm the, uh, the cost. Uh, we have taken the refurb. Uh, you know, I had a conversation with Amy and, and, uh, and David, I know you, Felt the same, I think, of taking off the refurb at this point uh, of our engine one, um, which 
I think is probably, you know, we were trying to combine two projects that would push. I was really trying to make it so folks understood that we're not asking to have two ladder trucks in town. We are asking to have two ladder pumper, everything trucks in town and pushing forward a capital request that would be coming up in another three to five years, pushing it back another 10 years by refurbing that truck. But as of right now, we are still good for the $2 million uh, for a new ladder truck. Uh, that allows for us, you know, there's equipment that needs to be replaced on our existing ladder. You know, we have hose that's from the 1970s that we usually build that back out once we do redo the truck. Um, so there is some there is some funding in that to be able to cover those costs. And the only difference right now is that we're looking rather than a three year build time, we're now up to a 48 month build time for a truck. So we are going to have to somehow limp along our current truck uh, potentially three, you know, over over three years now. Uh, so. And so, so, so the plan is to take the uh, the refurb off and limp along. We're yeah. going to have to for at least the next four years, and then we can make the decision if we decide we want to. Um, you know, we, the plan was to refurb it after uh, the new truck came in, anyways, because we we can't take our ladder out of service. Right. I mean, we're uh, we were extremely fortunate with that fire on East Street here that our guys the time of day and the location. Um, the fact that we, you know, we had to request Amherst if it had been a different location or a different time, it probably would have been a very different outcome. It's very hairy right now not having our ladder available to us. Okay. We're fortunate that our mutual aid partners, Northampton, finally received their new ladder, which is just strictly a ladder. There's no pump. There's no anything on it. It's just a ladder truck. And then Amherst has uh, uh, their Quint uh, that's similar to ours. So it's it's basically the same same style truck. Uh, I don't know if uh, Carolyn, can we talk about the Chinese immersion school or or no? The potential. You're yeah. muted. Um, you have more information about that than I do. Okay. Um, I was requested to have a meeting with the with. Is it okay if I go into that, David? So is it going to affect the finances or what it's you're just talking about how the impact of the ladder truck having that, correct? Well, that and then what his what he is requesting of his uh, foundation at the at the Chinese Immersion School. So this is not a guarantee, but he is he is um, he is going to be asking the school to provide one hundred thousand dollars towards the purchase of the ladder truck specifically to the ladder truck again i don't want to go down the road of the tower theater situation that we had at uh at the mall a number of years ago and then uh my full-time position with home depot you know where we had to wait um but he is very willing to go to bat for us uh i think what they're looking what they're looking at is they have you know they have one of the only four-story buildings in town right now which we have to back our quint into in order to reach the roof line. So we actually designed that uh, that east entrance of that new building specifically so we could get our, our truck in there. Uh, so they're looking at it as an increase in public safety and want to support us. Um, so I will give you more information, but I, I thought that was a pretty substantial positive towards that as well. Yeah, by all means. Um, is this going to be a, I'm assuming it has to be a debt exclusion again. There's, there's so, yeah, you know, because there, there's no other way to fund it. So it's kind of at the mercy of the ballot box again. It is. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions for the chief? That was, uh, that, that covered, um, where is it? Article th or item three on the agenda as well. The article pertains to the ladder truck. So. But all right. All right, Chief, I appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. And then the last thing we have on the agenda tonight is number four, receipt of open meeting law complaint. Uh Susan Del, Mo Del Molino 
uh, March 1st, 2024. And let me pull up the complaint so I can read it. Uh, this is uh, open meeting law complaint against the Hadley Finance Committee, Chair David Phil, members Amy Fiden, Andy Kopaki, Shardul Parmar, Paul Benjamin. This is date of alleged violation, February 29th, 2024, if meeting was actually held, which it was not. Um, upcoming meetings, March 7th, March 14th, March 21st, March 28th, March 24th. So we've already made people upset about meetings we've never even had. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Um, my understand, I, we can discuss it if you'd like, but my understanding is that um, the town council is drafting a response to that to send to Susan and uh, also to the attorney general's office. Um, I don't, did I miss part of reading that? Was there more? To yeah, so you you should read that complaint. And then um, just to clarify, we'll, oh. we'll, you, you guys will... Um, we are, we are going to be sending these now to the attorneys because we just don't have the bandwidth anymore to respond to, to, to be able to do our due diligence researching whether, you know, whether we violated it or not. So the attorneys are now um, going to be re reviewing them and then giving us the feedback so that the committees will have that feedback. But you will vote on the response and decide if that's the response you want to give. And then you as a committee will give it to the attorney general and Susan. Okay. So, so you should just read the complaint so that is transparent. Yeah. Uh, some more legal fees. Great. Um, all right. So, so I apologize for that. I didn't realize there was the second page. It didn't come up. Um, can, so. can you put the, uh, can you put, bring the complaint up on the screen? So it's, I mean, not only reading it, it's memorialized. Uh, Carolyn, are you able to do that on yours? Uh, who, has sharing, who, who has sharing capability there? Um, it's, it's going to, you don't have it. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I can dig it up, know. but I didn't know if we wanted to put it up on the, you know, put it up in the meeting for the sake uh, of the topic of discussion here. Yeah. I can read it. And then when we talk about our response, we can you, make sure that it's. Yeah. You can put it up too. If you have it, it's just going to take me a while. I've got to go digging through my emails and stuff. I mean, I mean, I have it, but I don't, I'm. Pretty certain I don't have shape uh, sharing capability. Um, you should. We've been able to do that, right, Linda? Yes, I think she has it so that everyone can share. Okay. I'm not sure I even have it. I was looking it up too. I, I have pay. I'm, I'm sitting on the email right now for page one and page two. Let me uh, let me try. Thank you. Yeah, I okay, here we go. Can you see it? Yes. All right. Here's page one. All right. I read that one. So, okay. All right. I'll share page two. Okay. Can you see that one? Yes. And I'll just read that out just in case somebody doesn't have the ability to see it. Uh, description of alleged violation. Uh, the Finance Committee has posted the exact same agendas for the following meeting, Thursday, February 29th, 2024, March 7th, March 14th, March 21st, March 28th, 2024, 6 p.m. See attached. This is the second open meeting law complaint filed against the Finance Committee in recent, leaks for, uh, recent weeks for the lack of specificity in the agenda. While this current agenda is more verbose, it is not more specific than the previously tersely worded one. It is unclear if the February 29th, 2024 meeting was actually held, but the agendas for all future meetings remain posted. And what actions do you want the public body to take in response to your complaint? All members of the Finance Committee should educate themselves on the open meeting law and partic in particular agendas. There are a number of recent open meeting law determinations that address this specific issue of non-compliance that finance committee members are encouraged to read before proceeding with the current agendas. 
C determination 27 2024, open meeting law 2024 27, Sturbridge Finance Committee. All members of the Finance Committee should monitor their committee for compliance with open meeting law. The agendas should be amended to comply with open meeting law. So, Carolyn, do you want us to do any discussion tonight or just wait till the uh, town council comes back and discuss it and we can vote on it then? You you can discuss it. Um, I can I can let you know that we the we pulled the future postings down and that's when we reposted um, with the detail of DPW and fire and the open meeting law complaint and amended it, made sure it was up to date. And so those future ones, which she had requested to be taken down. So we, we took those down. And so now um, I've given uh, the information, how those things happened. Um, and then that will come back to you guys. We're, we're still within our time. We, we have until the 19th, I think, to respond. But um, actually, I had uh, I was at a conference today. So council had uh, received the information. So I will forward that information on to you for your next meeting. And then you guys will discuss it then, agree uh, agree, or uh, make recommendations, uh, and then vote together how you'd like to respond. So do you have an idea of how much each one of these complaints end up costing the town? So we have different ways of paying. A so we pay per hour for labor. We pay per hour for litigation. The rest of it falls within a fixed fee, but it, it's it's got a capacity. So anything that we add to that capacity restricts it on a monthly basis. So we pay a so monthly fee on that. The hourly rate for our uh, access, if we go over our fixed amount. Then we start pay hourly. And how much is that rate? I want to say one, 190, 197 for 15, is it 15 minutes? I'm trying to, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, Andy. I'd have to look. So about $800 an hour? Oh, yeah, it's at least $100 an hour. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to get that. You said how much per hour? I, I would have to look. I, I would be I would be guessing. Okay. Okay. So is there, uh, in the meantime, is there a recommended strategy for seasonal blocking of meetings when we know that it's, this time of year where we're going to meet with various departments uh, and the agendas don't necessarily firm up until schedules are in place with the respective department heads. Um, so we just don't post uh, until up to 48 hours beforehand. That if that's, if we, I, we, we need to find out more from the attorney, how specific they need to be. I, I would say from what I, what I'm looking at, I think, I think having it posted, uh, all in one post that that was a, the decision from the clerk to do that because they were all the same. We were just trying to be more efficient, not trying to be less transparent. It's just that you guys will often go through the warrant and look at it, it might you might as the finance committee, you you can look at the whole warrant that has to do with articles. You also might look at the budget. You may. But this this is what we have to clarify. I mean, certainly my experience on a finance committee we often would have to, we would bounce around at different budgets. So we have to find out now what we can only speak on certain budgets and list it in the agenda. So I just can't answer that. We'll have to get the attorney's feedback on that. I mean, unfortunately, the only other thing would be to literally list every possible department that is in town. And then we could speak to them or about their budget. And then, you know, obviously, the problem with that gets to be that if we say hey, we're talking to park and rec and we actually don't end up talking to them when someone who's interested in park and rec is wasting their time trying to watch a meeting you know so otherwise it restricts us if we have to name every department specifically and then we say oh well you know what building maintenance something com comes up in fire about building maintenance and then we can't talk about it because you know we didn't specifically name uh dpw in in the in the agenda so that's that's where it's kind of a conundrum All right, anything else on that? And I guess we'll just wait for town council to do their thing. 
and provide you with the information for you guys to vote on to, to know how to, to to decide how you would like to respond. And you, you think that'll be ready for next week? Yes. Okay. I'll have it. I'll put it on the agenda for you. Okay. And if you could just to uh, confirm what our over our allotment monthly allotment hourly rate is. We can... I will do that. I mean, it's especially since we're spending some of the uh, funds in the uh, overflow account that we maintain. Yep. All right. Any last unanticipated business before Paul's spotlight? Yes. No? Going once, going twice. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Right. Motion by Paul, second by Andy, and I'll roll call it. Paul? Yes. Uh, Andy? Yes. Abdul? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Good night.